president today, but let's deal with her own problems at home in her backyard first. Jenny uh, Durkin, welcome back, Ms. Mayor. It's good to have you. Good to see you, Chris. Glad you're back and healthy. Thank you. Thank you for the good word. Uh, so I don't have to tell you about the situation on the ground in your city, uh, but in terms of how it looks to the rest of the country and the president uh, teeing it up as basically ineptitude, the ability, inability to control your own streets, is that fair criticism? So I know it will shock you that the president is perhaps not giving an accurate or truthful picture. Um, we've got four blocks in Seattle that you just saw pictures of that is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an armed takeover. It's not a military junta. Um, we, will, we will make sure that we can restore this, but we have block parties and, and the like in this part of Seattle all the time. It's, it's known for that. So I think the president, number one, there is no threat right now to the public. And we're looking, we're taking that very seriously. We're meeting with businesses and residents. But what the president threatened is illegal and unconstitutional. And the fact that he can think he can just tweet that and not have ramifications is just wrong. The counter will be block parties uh, don't take over a municipal building, let alone a police station, uh, and destroy it, um, basically thumbing their nose at any sense of civic control. Do you believe uh, that you have control of your city and that you would be able to clear those streets? Because you haven't. We do, and the chief of police was in that precinct today with her command staff looking and assessing on, on operational plans. But we saw that it was a point of conflict night after night between the police department and protesters. And we wanted to de-escalate that. And what we decided was the best way to do that was reopen the streets. And that itself ended up with some ramifications for the precinct to remove anything that was valuable from out of that building. But we will make sure that all of Seattle is safe. We're, we take public safety seriously. Um, but the description the president has given is not only wrong, but if it were right, his remedy is wrong. You don't dominate. Remember why we're here. You know, we're here because the nation saw Mr. Floyd murdered. And that lit a match across this country. And we have to acknowledge and know that we have a system that is built on systemic racism, and we have to dismantle that system piece by piece. We have to empower the black community and communities of color, and we have to invest in their health and their safety and their education and opportunity. Um, Mayor, the other counter uh, by the president, and many people on the right will be, well, of course, Durkin has a D after her name. Uh, she's going to be okay with this because these are her people. These are these left-wing anarchists and radicals, and they're letting them run free on the streets. You barely see any black or African-American faces on those streets. This is about lefty radicalism. I'll run amok in your city, and you seem okay with it. So, Chris, as you know, I was the United States attorney here in Seattle, and during that time as United States attorney, we investigated um, and prosecuted a whole range of bad actors, including militia groups and drug cartels, uh, anarchists and the like. We, are, we have our public safety approach in one way. And during this time, a number one priority every American city has is to protect the First Amendment right. Our country was born out of protest. The right to gather, the right to protest, the right to challenge government when it's wrong is our most fundamental constitutional right. It's a reason it's the First Amendment. And as a mayor of this city, I will do everything to protect that right and balance the public safety. I think not only can we do both, I think we have to do both. Uh, and what is the response to the president's call to dominate with compassion? He says solving your problem would be easy if you were strong and not weak. Your response was, you want to help? Go back to the bunker. Tough words. Look. We know the last time I spoke with you, we were talking about the pandemic. And I would yearn for just one positive thing the White House would give us, either on that public crisis or the public crisis we're facing right now on systemic racism. We need a president engaged to bring America together, to heal, and in the case of coronavirus, to literally heal to give me as a mayor the testing capacity I need. In Seattle, police responding to a shooting overnight in the occupied zone, the country known as CHOP, formerly known as CHAZ. This comes as the city's police union, get this, is expelled from the area's labor council, citing a failure to, quote, dismantle racism in their institution and society at large. President of the Seattle Police Officers Guild, Mike Solman, joins us now 
with the latest. Mike, uh, lots to chew on here. Well, let's start with what we know now about what happened inside CHOP. I, I, we're getting reports coming in of an incident there. What do you know? Well, Pete, thanks for having me on again. And as you were aware, violence has now besieged the area known as CHOP, and it is no longer the summer of love. It's a summer of chaos. And early this morning, that violence was raw and real, where one of our community members lost their life, and police are still not allowed into that area, and were prevented to providing that police service to the area to locate victims and or render aid. Mike, Very so you're, troubling so what's you're going saying on. we've got one person killed, uh, potentially others injured, we don't know. We don't know what the incident was. But the Seattle Police Department cannot go in and has not confirmed. That is correct. How can that stand in America? It can't stand in America. And this is a direct result of city leadership, elected officials failing the reasonable community of Seattle to enforce the rule of law. And this just isn't the area occupied in a six block zone where police are still forbidden and still don't have their East Precinct. This is now impacting our entire city. And last night as well, the flagship precinct, the West Precinct downtown was defaced with anti-police graffiti. And again, we're left wondering what's next. And now our elected officials have removed our ability to have less lethal chemical munitions that are effective in us for us to disperse uh, unruly violent crowds uh, to protect those police facilities, let alone ourselves. So we're in a very, very troubling time in Seattle, and it's deeply concerning that everybody across this country needs to be aware of what's going on in Seattle. What do you know about what does come next? They want less cops, uh, less equipment, less non-lethal equipment, yet at some point this occupied zone has to end, right? Well, you're going to have to have the political backbone to finally enforce the rule of law, because if this continues to spiral down, which we saw early this morning, yeah with a homicide, um, I don't see what the remedy is. So we need leadership now more than ever. And I find it ironic that the same public officials that are uh, creating these uh, decisions that put everybody's uh, public safety at risk are now calling on for defunding the police. Yeah. And those two aren't compatible. You can't have defunding the police and better police services uh, because the first thing to go, as you and I both know, Pete, is training. Yep. And when, if you remove the training budget, you remove quality police service, and we know that separating good cops from bad is all about training. Bingo. Mike, you're spot on. i got to ask you about this, though. The, the Seattle Police Officers Guild is the police union for the Seattle Police Department, yet the group of unions in Seattle has now kicked you out of the union group. Why? Well, they wanted us to say that we are a racist institution, and that's completely uh, an egregious attempt for political pandering. And what I think this is is an opportunity for us to connect with the other reasonable labor organizations that encompass that labor council so we can all come together and highlight the unreasonable activism that has now besieged uh, Seattle. Political uh, discourse here is falling. And now we have public safety issues that are impacting everybody. And I think this is an opportunity for us to reach the reasonable crowd. And it smacks of hypocrisy. It's discriminatory because as you and I both know, Pete, mm -hmm. our membership are a wonderfully diverse group of people that resemble Seattle's of values. Course. Of course, Mike, but if you want to be a part of the discourse, just go ahead and admit you're racist right now and then everything will be fine. Yeah, that's how they look yeah, That's at the world. what they want. That's and uh, you can't tell me that just is not hypocritical. Unbelievable. It's of amazing. course it is. It's discriminatory, it's racist, and it's hypocritical. Uh, Mike Solon, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Hey, Good Pete, luck. thank you for highlighting this serious issue. You got it. Very much so.